the formidable robot. I want to start by saying that if you're someone who thinks the beta of Luigi's Mansion is better than the final game, you're wrong. The beta is complete garbage, and I know this because I worked at Nintendo as part of the team that developed the game. I was a game developer and assistant during the process. Also if you're hoping to play the beta, you won't be able to. Even if the ROM hacking community targets it, they won't be able to recreate it entirely or accurately. It was the early 2000s, and we were preparing the game for Space World. I'm grateful to have been part of the development team, and I'm glad the game became as popular as it did, spawning sequels like Dark Moon and Luigi's Mansion 3. But this story isn't about the second or third games. It's about the first one. I was one of the few employees who really cared about that game, and I'm actually the one who suggested the 3DS remake. There was one employee on our team who wanted the game to have a much darker tone, which didn't fit the Mario standards at all. He helped with development, and to tease the game to the public, we created a full motion video. It was even posted on YouTube. The video was meant to showcase the graphics of the Nintendo GameCube. The creepiest thing this employee contributed was that disturbing clip used at E3, the one of Luigi with those eerie soulless eyes. He modeled that. For your information, that wasn't supposed to be part of the game over sequence. It was used to promote the game and grab attention. We needed to convince players to try the game, and this was the best way we could think of to market it. Now what did we actually add? Well at that point, we hadn't added much yet. But here's what I can tell you. There's a scene where lightning strikes as the camera zooms in on the mansion, showing Luigi entering and looking back at the camera before turning around. This became the pause screen. Another scene showed Luigi being chased by a blue ghost, followed by more ghosts tormenting him. And yes, that scene where Luigi steps out of the mansion with that unsettling gloomy face? That was in there too. There's also a scene of three ghosts playing cards in the parlor, which made its way into the final game. It was used for the ghost portrificationizer, where bosses end up trapped in paintings after Luigi defeats them. And yes, I know the bosses had some pretty dark backstories. We were having a rough time working on the game, and that affected the story choices, but that's beside the point. One of the darker more mysterious additions was the rumored hunter ghost. It was said to appear in the trophy room. Some believed that the hunter's purpose was to round up Luigi's head as a trophy for his collection. It didn't make it to the final release, but there were whispers about it, especially among the staff. It was too dark for the game, even by our standards. We showcased all of this at Space World 2000. By 2001, we were still working on the game when Miyamoto came into the room and told us to get ready for E3. One of the team members told the disturbing clip employee not to add anything like that again. Here's a list of changes we made by then. The title screen had skip intro and from the beginning options. If you chose from the beginning, you'd see a different logo than the one in the final game. Also if you left the game idle for too long, Luigi would crouch down. Professor Egad's dialogue was different too, his name was only spelled with one D. Fortunately, the disturbing employee didn't mess up again. In fact, he contributed something useful. He made a prototype of the Poltergust, though it was more square, and we cut it for good reasons. The prototype had a heater meter, if it kept in, the poltergust would burst into flames, hurting Luigi. It was graphic, but at least he didn't make it so Luigi bled or lost chunks of his body. If he had, I would've slapped him. Even if I got fired, I wouldn't regret it. This is a children's game, Mario should be safe for the whole family. It shouldn't be graphic. Though interesting enough, in the final game, there were blood stains in the breaker room on the floor. Some YouTube videos show it, and I had no idea that was in the game until recently. But that's all there was to it. Now here's where things get disturbing. The Game Boy Horror had a timer. You might think it would trigger that creepy clip of Luigi stepping out of the mansion, but no, it worked more like a demo clock, where Egad would send you back to the title screen so others could play. There was a bug though. Players could still explore the mansion, and many of the shadows were glitched. Luigi's shadow would be off the ground, distorted, and even chase the player at times. 
that's when people stopped playing the demo and waited for the full game. Unfortunately, that glitch made it into the final release too, appearing in the nursery, balcony, and the telephone room. Luckily, it was fixed in the 3DS remake. However, many of us realized something was wrong. Remember what I said about that clip? You know how it scared people? Well, the look of Luigi in that clip, where he exits the mansion with a gloomy face and lightning lights up the scene, was only the first half. I swear to God, that employee, I have no clue what his intentions were or why this company kept him around. Even as I write this, he's still an employee. Regardless, this is how the entire clip played out, and remember when I said it wasn't supposed to be a game over? Well it wasn't, but it was hauntingly close. After Luigi stood in front of the mansion, the thunder cracked. He looked down at the ground, which never happened in the cutscene. The camera zoomed in on a daisy in his hand, and a tear rolled down his face. He whispered one word. Mario. Luigi slowly walked over to the sidewalk in front of the mansion. He sat down, his shoulders shaking. Then after a long moment, he curled up in a ball. In the distance, the mansion slowly began to fade away, and Mario's name could be seen, trapped forever inside a painting. Luigi sobbed, but then his sad gloomy expression quickly turned to something darker. His eyes were now entirely black, his face twisted in anger. A car's headlights glared from the darkness, and Luigi, almost as if possessed, stood up and walked into the path of the car. The driver slammed on the brakes, but it was too late. The car hit him, sending him sprawling back. His hat flew off and landed perfectly on the sidewalk, now stained with his own blood. The car stopped, and a muffled voice could be heard, Peach, speaking to someone about taking Luigi's body to the Mushroom Kingdom Hospital. The screen cut to black, but not before showing Luigi's lifeless body lying in the road, his eyes still hollow, his hat lying beside him. The words on the screen were familiar, but they felt different. Good night. I don't know how to process this. I remember hearing those theories about Luigi being dead in the game, about the mansion being some twisted purgatory. Maybe, just maybe, there was some truth to it. I'm still haunted by that video, by what we saw, and by how this all unfolded. I don't know how I feel about Nintendo anymore. Why would they let someone like that stay on the team? Why did they let those dark elements make it into the game? The whole thing feels wrong, and I can't help but wonder what they were trying to hide. I'll say this, if you ever want to run a company as big as Nintendo, listen to the people who are working with you. Don't let the money blind you. And honestly, I remember hearing a rumor about an easter egg related to the shadow glitch, something about Nintendo meaning, leave luck to hell, instead of heaven. Maybe they should have listened to that warning. Because by allowing someone like him to represent their company, it feels like they've already left luck to hell. Oh well, it's just what it is. Sincerely, a former Nintendo employee.